Greetings good people, here is our chance to look at the alimentary canal of a cow. Remember that when we talk about a cow, we are talking about an animal that is categorized or classified as a ruminant animal. And remember we said ruminant animals are those animals that have a, that have a complex stomach, which means they have about four chambers. We also say that these are animals that can regurgitate meaning they are able to bring back food to their mouth for proper chewing, which you can call it chewing the cud. We also say that these are animals that, are, that can feed on cellulose or that are able to digest cellulose. We will look at the adaptation of this animal in being able to feed or to digest what? Cellulose. Okay, fine. In this lesson, there's just one thing that I want you to note. You must know the structure of the alimentary canal. You must know the part that is found in the alimentary canal of a ruminant animal, which is a cow in this case. And you must know the function of that structure. We, we, we will not focus more on adaptations. We will have a, a separate lesson where we focus on the adaptation of that part, of those parts, the, the, the selected parts. The first thing that you can talk about here is the mouth. When you look at the alimentary canal or the mouth in an alimentary canal of a, fowl, of, of a cow, there are two functions that take place. One of those functions is ingestion. When you talk about ingestion, remember we said this is when an animal is taking large food molecules into the mouth so the intake of large food molecules into the mouth we also talk about mechanical digestion remember when we talk about mechanical digestion we say this is a process or this is a breaking down of food or of large food molecules into simpler particles using teeth so there are two functions that take place here function number one the animal is taking food into the mouth, that is your ingestion. Function number two, the animal is chewing food or the animal is breaking down food using teeth. That is function number two. As you can see the picture that we have here, the animal is taking food into the mouth and then what will follow next? It will be mastication which is chewing. Let's talk about the next part. The next part we can give it a name and say it's esophagus or gallet. You can use one or any of these two, two, two names given. When we look at this one, in esophagus we used to say it is a long tube that begins from the mouth up until we go or up until it reaches the stomach of an animal. In this case, it begins from the mouth up to what? Up to the rumen. So it's a long tube that is made up of what? Of muscles. There is one or two functions that takes place here. When we look at an esophagus, we can say what is taking place here. It is peristalsis. Or you can say it's a retro peristalsis or reverse peristalsis. I think you are asking yourself a question. Why we say what is the name of this process peristalsis? Peristalsis, I tried to define it here. Peristalsis, we can say, this is the movement of bolus along the esophagus. It's just a simple definition. But if you want to, to go deeper with this definition, you can say, this is the relaxation and the contraction of longitudinal and circular muscles of an alimentary canal with an aim of moving the food down the alimentary canal or along the alimentary canal of an animal. We call it peristalsis. Now we, we have highlighted retroperistalsis. Retroperistalsis can also be called reverse peristalsis. Remember we said a ruminant animal can regurgitate, meaning this ruminant animal it can swallow food into the stomach and it can also reverse food back to the stomach. So the process whereby the food is going to the stomach for the first time, we call it 
peristalsis. The process whereby the food goes back to the mouth for proper chewing, for, for remastication, we then call it what? Retroperistalsis. Okay, fine. You can come across such a question or such a diagram. What are they saying in this diagram? They're saying the diagram below shows this is where we are now. The diagram below shows chewed food particles that have just been swallowed by a ruminant animal, as you can see. After mechanical digestion in the mouth, the food is swallowed and it moves towards the stomach for further digestion. This is what you may get here. You can be given this diagram. The first question you may get, what is the name of the process shown here? You can even highlight it down there in your notebook, in your rough work notebook. What is the name of the process shown here? If you can look at it thoroughly here, sometimes you'll get these arrows. If you look, this is food or bolus, food in a form of bolus. The food is moving downwards. And what has happened here? The muscles relax, the contract, sorry. The muscles also relax. So it means the food is moving downwards the oesophagus. So what is the name of this process? You will say it's what? It's peristalsis. Question number two. Which part of the alimentary canal where this process takes place? The part of the alimentary canal where this process takes place, you will say it's what? It's oesophagus. Case on that one. You will say the process is what? It's also focus. Okay, fine. Question number three you may come across. Question number three you may come across. Apologies on this problem that we have just faced, people. Question number three you may come across, they may say, what is the name of this structure? What is the name of this part? We say it's oesophagus. They may say, provide us with the name of this food. Once the food is here in the oesophagus, we no longer call it food as it is, but we give it a name and say it's what? It's bolus. That's what you can highlight here. So we'll give it a name and say it's bolus. So make sure that you are familiar with this process because you can come across it. But the main process that takes place in an oesophagus, you say it's peristalsis. Allow me to continue to look at the next part. But when we look at this next part, there are a few things I want you to not quote people. When we look at this one, we will now look at the four chambers of a cow or the complex or the compound stomach. When we look at these chambers, one, I want you to know the name of the chamber. I want you to know the size of the chamber, especially for the first two reticulum, the rumen and reticulum. Three, I want you to know the internal structure of the chamber. Then four, the function of the chamber. Okay, fine. Let's try to look at it. You have the rumen. The first thing you have to note when we look at a rumen, we say the rumen, when you look at the internal structure of a rumen, it has what? It has finger-like projections. If you try to look at this one, these are the finger-like projections that are found where? In the rumen of a, red, of a, of a ruminant. What do we call these finger-like projections? These finger-like projections are given a name and said it's what? They are papillae. So you will get this question in section A. Finger-like projections found in a rumen. Your answer will be what? Will be papillae. Okay, fine. So this is what we say. The rumen may have finger-like projections. What is the name of those finger-like projections? We said it's what? It's papillae. We will look at the functions of the papillae later. But just to brief you, the papillae will have two important functions. Take it down this one. One, 
the papilla will be responsible for the absorption of volatile fatty acids. We will talk about the volatile fatty acid when we focus on the digestion of cellulose. So function number one, the papillae are responsible for the absorption of volatile fatty acids in the rumen. Two, the papillae, they say they act as heating rods. What do they do then? They are responsible for generating energy. They are responsible for generating energy in the rumen or in the reticular rumen. That's why you, we, we say a, 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 a ruminant animal is able to generate more energy compared to the non-ruminant animals. What assists the? It is the presence of the papillae that act as heating rods. I say you must know the name of the chamber, the internal structure of the chamber, and also the size of the chamber. We are saying it is the rumen. How how is the appearance, the internal appearance, internal appearance, fingerlet projections? What is the name of the fingerlet projections? Papillae. Then we say, when you look at the rumen, it is the largest stomach and it makes about 80% of all the four chambers. So it is one that is the largest out of them all. Let's try to look at the function. One, we can say the function of the rumen it's for microbial digestion. If we say it's for microbial digestion, we simply mean it is responsible for the digestion of cellulose. It is responsible for the digestion of what? Of cellulose. We will talk about this process later. What is responsible or what makes the animal to digest cellulose? It is the presence of the microorganisms. That's why we call it what microbial fermentation. We will talk about this one when we get into reticular rumen digestion. Another function that you can add here. Remember we said the papillae. What is the function of the papillae? They absorb what? Volatile fat acid. You can also add it here that one of the role of the rumen is for the absorption of volatile fat acid. But the main function of the rumen is the one that we have highlighted here, microbial fermentation. Okay, fine. Let's look at the next stomach. The next stomach or the next chamber, we call it reticulum. When we look at the reticulum, the first thing that you have to note, look at the internal structure of the reticulum. We used to say the reticulum, it is in a form of what? It is in a form of honeycomb. So when you look at the structure of this, the internal structure of the reticulum, it's a honeycomb structure. So if you look at it in a similar way, it, it shows a structure of a honey. Honey say it's honeycomb. Another thing that you can highlight here is that the reticulum, it is the smallest stomach out of them all. It is the smallest stomach. Let's try to check. We're saying the reticulum is a honeycomb in the form of starch, as you can see. Two, we can say it is the smallest stomach. How many percent it makes? It makes about 5%. So now we know the stomach that is the largest, which is the rumen. We know the stomach that is the smallest, which is the reticulum. We also know the internal structure of the rumen which is finger-like projections. We also know the internal structure of the reticulum, which is honeycomb. Okay, fine. What about the functions? Function number one, it's microbial fermentation. Do you see that this very same function is the same function that we highlighted under a rumen? So what I want you to understand, good people, is that these two stomachs, they perform or they perform a same function concerning the digestion of cellulose. That's why you sometimes that you find that the reticulum and the rumen they give it one name and they say it is reticular rumen. We say it's reticular rumen because there is a combination between these two stomachs in terms of their functioning. Function number two, it brings back food to the mouth. That is the second function. During the regurgitation process, remember we said 
the, this animal will ruminate. It can regurgitate, meaning it can bring back food to the mouth. Then this is the stomach that pushes the food back to the mouth during the regurgitation process. Function number three, this rumen, it is, this reticulum, it is able to block any foreign particle. It is able to block any foreign particle or any foreign project object to pass through it. So there are three functions. One, it is the microbial fermentation. Two, push the food back to the mouth. Three, it blocks any foreign object or any foreign particle to pass through and go to the apomasum and the omasum. Let's look at the next stomach. Omasum. The omasum, we, 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 we say, when you look at it, it is leaf-like, then with some little papillae. But the main thing is that when you look at it, it is leaf-like. That's what you must notice here. Okay, fine. If we say it is leaf-like, the omasum is leaf-like, it makes about 8%. Don't worry about the size here. Just know that it's leaf-like. There are but two functions that take place here. One, it's for the removal of what? Of water or absorption of water. These leaves will squeeze the food, squeeze the food to remove the excess water or to absorb the excess water. That is the role of what? Of the omasum. Two, it is also responsible for what? For, chemi for mechanical digestion. These small papillae, these small finger -like structures, when they mix together, they are able to grind food when they squeeze. They are able to grind food in a, mecha in a, me in a mechanical way. So there are two functions, removal of excess water and also mechanical digestion of what? Of food. That's how you can understand this one. Let's look at the third one, abomasum. When we look at the abomasum, abomasum we just say it is the true stomach of an animal. This is the stomach that is the same to the stomach of a pig, that is the same to the proventriculus of a chicken, and it's also the same to the stomach of a human being. Okay, fine. We say it's a true stomach, it makes about 7%. The main function of it is chemical digestion. The main function of what? Of the abomasum. Take note of this part. Under reticular rumen or under the rumen and reticulum, we have to talk about the adaptation of it. We said the digestion of cellulose. We must know the adaptation, why those two stomachs are adapted or suitable to digest cellulose. We will talk about it later. Again here, abomasum, we have to know why the animal, why the abomasum is able to digest food in a chemical way. We will also talk about it later. So don't worry, we will talk about the adaptation of the reticular rumen in digestion cellulose. We will also talk about the adaptation of the abomasum in chemical digestion. We will just prepare a separate lesson for this one. Okay, fine. Before we, 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 we move on, good people, let's try to check what we've done in the table format. We look at the structure and function. Mouth, that's what we've highlighted. Ingestion and mechanical digestion. Esophagus, we talked about peristalsis and retroperistalsis. The rumen, we talked about its function. The reticulum, we talked about its function. We also look at the omasum. Again, we talked about the function. The abomasum, we've just highlighted it now. Then, when we look at small intestines, under small intestines, we, we say small intestines are divided into three. There is the first part, which is duodenum. The middle part, which is jejunum. Then we have the last part, which is ileum. The duodenum is where most of the, it's where the liver will secrete the bile into or will deposit the bile to. And again, the pancreas will deposit the pancreatic juices into. So the pancreatic juices and the bile are deposited into the duodenum. Then here in the jejunum is where most of the chemical digestion will take place. Then we have the ileum. Okay, fine. There are three functions of the small intestine. 
One, it is chemical digestion. We will highlight, we will talk about the adaptations of the small intestine to perform chemical digestion, whereby we look at three glands that we will talk about. We talk about the liver, the pancreas, and the sacus entericus or intestinal glands. Two, the absorption. Another function is absorption. We will also look at the adaptation of the small intestines for absorption. Whereby we say we talk about the presence of the finger-like projections called villi. Then we also have peristalsis, which is which is what we have talked about, the movement of food. But in this case, we now call it chime, the movement of chime along the small intestines. So that's what we can understand with this one. But the, the, the deeper part, we'll check it in the next lesson under digestion and absorption in small intestines. That's what you can get here. Let's quickly look at the large intestines. The large intestine, this one will cover both for ruminant and non-ruminant. The large intestines are also divided into three. We have the chiacum, we have the colon, we also have what? The rectum. When you look at the function of the chiacum, especially in chickens, we say they are responsible for bacterial fermentation or if they don't say bacterial fermentation, they will say microbial fermentation. The colon, they are responsible for absorption of water. Then the rectum, it's where the undigested food or the waste product will be stored just before any e elimination or before e ingestion. Then we have the anus, which is ingestion. That's what you have to do. So this is what I want you to note using this information. In the exam, they may give you the alimentary canal of an animal. After giving you the alimentary canal of an animal, then they will label A, B, C, D, E, F, G, depending on the letters that they use. Then they will say which part where absorption of water takes place. Provide the letter. You must be able to provide the letter which part where temporary storage of undigested food occurs, you must be able to provide the letter. So it means before we even talk about the functions, you must know the labeling or the parts of what? Of an elementary canal of a farm animal. Okay, fine. Let's try to, 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 to close it by looking at this two slides, two different slides. Identification of, of the four chambers, of the four chambers, sorry, of the four chambers. One, what you can get here, we have A, B, C, D, E. Our A, which is the gallet, which is the oesophagus and it. Our B, Remember we said, there is a stomach that is the largest. We said, what is the name of the largest stomach? We said, the largest stomach, thank you. We said, it is the rumen. So it means our B is the rumen. We also say, there is a stomach that is the smallest, which is C here. What is the name of the smallest stomach? We said it's what? It's a reticulum. Then we are left with D and E. Take note of this part. The stomach that is connected to the small intestine. The stomach that is connected to the small intestine, which is E. We give it a name and say it's what? It is the abomasum. The stomach that is left alone then we will say it's what? It's omasum. So that's how you can talk about the labeling. You start with the largest rumen. You go to the smallest reticulum. You go to the one that is connected to the small intestine. It's what? It's your abomasum. Then you go to the one that will be left alone. It will be the omasum. Okay, fine. Let's also talk about this part. When we look at this one, the internal structure, if you try to recall, there are four chambers, 
Kune rumen. You must know the internal structure of a rumen. We also have the reticulum. You must know the internal structure of the reticulum. We have the omasum. You must know the internal structure of the omasum and together with the apomasum. Let's try to recall. How is the internal structure of what? Of an omasum. When you look at the of, 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 a, of, of a rumen, let's start with the rumen. The rumen, we said it is it has finger-like projections. So if we say it has finger-like projections, then try to check the stomach here. Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Is it D that shows finger-like projections? Mm, assist me. Okay, we say it's what? It's B, it's D. So it means B have finger-like projections called papillae. So what would be the name of D? You will say rumen. Simple. Then we have another stomach. When you look at the internal structure of the stomach, it has what? It has a honeycomb structure. It has a honeycomb structure. We say what's the name of that stomach with a honeycomb structure? It's what? It's a reticulum. So which stomach here shows a reticulum or shows a honeycomb structure? It's your C. So you say our C here will be reticulum. Then you go to B. B, when you look at it, it has what? Leaf-like structures. So if we say it has leaf-like structures, we will say it's what? It's omasum. Then we will have this one, which will be what? Which will be a bonasum. Simple, simple. That's how you can be able to understand it. Simple. Allow me to erase this one. Simple. A, abomasum, omasum, reticulum, together with that, with the room. That's the simplest part of it that you can get there. Okay, fine. You, 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 you can also check this elementary canal and try to provide them a function. So what they can do here, they can ask you the function of the osophagus, the function of the rumen, of the omasum, of the reticulum, of the abomasum, any of these structures or else so be able to draw and label it or else they come here they say label a to h a b c d e f g h then they say provide function provide the letter where so and so take place when so and so take place so please take your time and provide the levels from a to H. Then you must know that there are functions. Let's say here, they say, okay, fine. Go give us the letter where peristalsis take place. We know that peristalsis take place in where? In the osophagus. So which letter represents an osophagus here? It will be letter H. Provide us with the letter where absorption take place it's what it's small intestine so it will be c provide us with the letter where microbial digestion take place it's rumen or reticulum so it means it will be g or else it will be what it will be f so the questions will be based on that one ne? but we will get a time and look at the questions but make sure that you finish on this level okay good people this is how i want you to understand it we'll come back and look at the elementary canal of a of a chicken which is this one but we'll look at it separately so thank you